This lesson will be about if statement. Now, before we code if statements, we need to know about comparison operators. So these are the six comparison operators that you need to know before you code if statement. Firstly, is the greater than sign. This just means that the number on the left side is bigger than the number on the right side. If that's true, then we put true, otherwise we put false. So here 44 is bigger than 5, so that's true. So 44 is greater than 5, so that would be true. Less than, so less than sign, which is that one. So 33 is less than 20. That's false because 33 is bigger than 20. Then we have the equal to, which is one of the most important ones in um, if statements. So the equal to, which is, um, which is used with double equal sign, means that two things are equal to each other. They're exactly the same as each other. So this could be either um, a name that is exactly the same as another name or a number that is exactly as another number. For example, is Tom equals to Tom? That would be true. Is Tom equals to Alex? No, that would be false. So 10 is equal to 20. That would be false because 10 is not the same as 20. The two different numbers. If it says 10 is equal to 10, that would be true. Next, we have the not equal to. So this is the opposite of the equal to. Not equal to just means that two things are not the same. If they're not the same, then it's true. In this example, we have 5 is not equal to 2. That's true because 5 is not the same as 2. If I said um, Charlie is not equal to Ava, that would be true because Charlie is not the same as Ava. They're two different names. Then we have the greater than or equal to. So here we have two conditions. As long as one of them is true, then it would be true. So in this example, it says 20 is greater than or equal to. So let's say, is 20 greater than 20? That would be no, that would be false. Then it says or equal to. So is 20 equal to 20? Yes, that's true. Because the second condition is true, that would evaluate it true overall. So as long as we have one true, it would be true. Less than or equal to is exactly the same. So 5 is less than or equal to 10. Because 5 is less than 10, that would also be true. Okay, now we move on to coding it. So this is an example of a real life situation. So if it's raining outside, then you would normally take an umbrella with you. Otherwise, so else you don't. So here is how we can we start the if statement. So we can create a variable and ask the user a question. So name is the variable and then input enter name will ask the question, will ask the user to enter the name. Then we put if. So after if we always need the condition. In this case, our condition is name equals to Rose. So if the name is equal to Rose, then we need to display high Rose. Now you can see that there is a colon right at the end. Now we always, always need a colon at the end of an if statement. Now after that, on the third line, we've got some space here. Now this space is called indentation and it represents a block of code so the start and end of a block of code so before you type print if you want something inside your if statement then it has to be indented you need to put space before it you can press tab on your keyboard to add space to it so it's about four lines four spaces but you just need to press tab so if I type rows as the name then it will display high rows. If I type anything else other than rows, it will not display anything. Now, this is not efficient. We need it to display something if I type something other than rows. Now, to do that, we need to use the else. Now, else allows us to display something if the first condition is not met. So if the user doesn't type rows, if the user types anything other than rows, then it will display who are you. So this is why we use else. Now you can see else does not have a condition because you do not need any conditions with else. You just need to put else then a colon. You have to remember the colon as well. It's very important. If you don't put it, you will get a, an error. So else just means otherwise do this. So if the name is rows, then we display high rows. Otherwise, if it's anything else, then we display who are you. 
Now, if we wanted to add more things to it, so here we have another indentation. Again, we always need to indent after if and after else. So uh, we can we can know that this part of the code is inside the if statement or the else. Okay, if we want to add more names, we can use elif. So elif stands for else if. Now you can have as many elifs as you want inside a single if statement. However, you can only have one if and one else. So it could be if name is equals to rows, then we display high rows. Else if the name is Sarah, hi Sarah. Else if name is so far, then hi so far, and so on. And you keep carry on as many elifs as you want, but we can only have one if and one else. So we need to put if normally comes at the start and else right at the end. So you also need to know about the quotation marks because rows, Sarah, they're all names, they contain letters, they're, they are strings. Now with strings, we always need to put quotation marks around them. Now, if it, w if it was a number, we wouldn't need to because we don't need to put a number as a string. So here we, we, ha here we have another example. So it says password equals input, enter password. Now it says if what will the program display if the user types overwatch? Now, if the user types overwatch, then it will display close. So, this is because the password here says, if the password is overwatch, then we display close. So, it goes from the top and it takes it one line at a time. So, if the password is over 123, then it would display that uh, access granted. And if it was... Um, potatoes123, then it will go to the else statement and display access denied because potato123 is not over123 and it's also not over watch123. Now here we have another example with numbers. So as you can see, it's exactly the same structure. We have if, we have elif, we have else, but you don't always need elif. It depends on the question and you don't always need else. Also depends on the question or what you're coding. Now, here we have, if the power level is over 9,000, then we want to display over 9,000. So it says, what will the program display if the user enters 9,500? Now, if that's the case, 9,500 is greater than 9,000, so it will display the first part, which is over 9,000, and your program will stop.